Welcome to our opening ceremonies. Norfolk County Sheriff's Department Honor Guard will be presenting the colors for the national anthem. Thank you. Good morning again. Welcome to the uh, opening ceremonies for the Four Heroes second annual golf tournament. Uh, the superintendent, Victor, is unable to speak right now, so it's an honor to be, uh, to be asked to speak on his behalf at this event. Uh, why are we here? Uh, the superintendent is very passionate about advocating for first responders, and on the afternoon of the murder of Sergeant Michael Chester of the Weymouth Police Department, he felt motivated to do something for first responders. That was the first annual event, and that's why we're here today. Um, it's guys like Victor Barusa that advocate for members of the public safety community that make the job worth doing. For anybody that doesn't know me, I'm your Deputy Chief of Police in Stoughton here. My name is Brian Holmes. Um, th this is a great event where it brings members of the community together, uh, members, of, members of public safety together. Um, I'd like to take a moment to welcome distinguished guests here, the Police Chief, the Fire Chief, Dr. Grimm, the Town Manager, all the, the employees of the Town Hall. This is an incredible showing here uh, at this event. On September 11th, 01, I don't call it people who lost their lives, I call it people who were murdered by terrorists. This country lost eight EMTs, 60 police officers, 343 firefighters, and 2,997 civilians based on the terrorist events of 9-11. My son is in eighth grade and he actually had to write a paper for, um, for English and he actually had to interview me about the events of 9-11 and he asked me some things that the teacher directed the students to, to talk about. And one of the questions was, what do you remember about that day, and what do you remember after that day? And I remember I had worked an overnight shift, and I was awoken by a friend on the phone at about 10 o'clock, a little after, and, and he said, turn on the television. So I was shocked, just like everybody else was. Uh, for that moment in time, 320 million people in the United States probably felt like one group of people at that time. Adversity brings people together, and at that time, I think that that lasted for about six months, maybe longer, where people really appreciate it over and above they normally do the work of first responders. So some of the things I remember about that day is the shock and horror of turning on the television to see what happened to this great nation. I remember going to work at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It was a day like today, but there was not a cloud in the sky and there was no humidity. I remember looking up while I was working at the sky and seeing not a single plane. I remember that eerie feeling that we all remember 
when there was not a single plane in the sky because the planes were grounded for so long. I'll never forget 9-11, and I hope none of you, you do either. The events of today, uh, the proceeds will benefit a police charity of the department's choosing for the police department and a fire charity of the fire department's choosing uh, based on the events of today. Uh, with that, I'd like to call on retired Deputy Fire Chief Paul Roach for a convocation. Sergeant Fire, engine 482. Oh God, we remember before you this day our brothers and sisters lost on September 11, 2001. We thank you for their example of courage and sacrifice. In your boundless compassion, console their families, friends, and co-workers, and all who mourn their loss. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our journey and serve with honor, dignity, and courage. We present our prayers to a loving and caring Father. Your response to these petitions would be, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who perished on September 11, 2001 at the World Trade Center, at the Pentagon, and in the fields of Pennsylvania, that they experience eternal life with God in heaven, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grieve, for wives and husbands, parents and friends, hearts that were saddened by the loss of loved ones that might be strengthened with courage and come to know the promise of new life, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the children, for those left without a parent, and for the children who witnessed the attacks, that they might flourish in the embrace of loving hearts and the promise of life well lived, we pray to the Lord. For the firefighters, police personnel, emergency service workers, for medics and counselors, and for all who volunteered, that they experience the rewards of generous time, of a generous of service in a generous time of peril, we pray to the Lord. for world leaders and governments of nations, that they will put aside all petty concerns and work together, ensuring justice and peace for everyone. We pray to the Lord. And for a future of freedom and peace, for courage, wisdom, and strength of heart, to live every day in a hopeful and peaceful world, grounded in the knowledge of God's love and care for each of us, we pray to the Lord. We're reminded of the words of the prophet Isaiah and hope for the future. They shall turn their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not lift the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. We ask all this in God's name. Amen. Thank you, Deputy Chief. At this time, we'd like to call on active uh, Deputy Fire Chief Scott Preen. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's uh, amazing to see such a, a great crowd here today. Um, to keep with the state protocols, we're a little off. We want to um, we want to get right into our uh, protocols of, of lowering the mass, the flag to half mast, and, and tolling uh, tolling of the bells, and then we will uh, have a moment of silence for all those that were lost, and then we'll continue on with the program. So if I could ask, uh, Tyler.
So again, I wanted to welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, we stand here today to remember the tragic events of September 11, 2001, when 2,977 innocent victims lost their lives. Of those 209,777 victims, souls, 343 were firefighters, 71 were law enforcement officers, and 55 were military personnel at the Pentagon. We also remember all the survivors and responders who have since passed due to illnesses contracted due to their work at Ground Zero. I would ask you to keep them all, all keep all of the victims and, and all first responders and active military personnel in your thoughts and praise today and every day. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick uh, reason why we, we ring the tolls on occasions like this. We, we do this uh, on today, September 11th. We also do this annually at our Firefighter Sunday Memorial Service, which is held the second Sunday in June, which you're all welcome to attend. It's held at uh, Station 2. Uh, but the significance of striking the four fives in the fire service is because long before telephones and radios, fire departments used the telegraph to communicate. When the handle was pulled on the once familiar red fire alarm boxes found on nearly every street corner of America, a special code was transmitted to every fire station. When a firefighter died in the line of duty, the fire alarm office would tap out a special signal. That signal was five measured dashes, then a pause, then five measured dashes, followed by five more strikes, another pause, then five more strikes at the tapper. This became universally known as the tolling of the bell and was broadcast over all the telegraph fire alarm circuits. The signal was a sign of honor and respect for all firefighters who had made the ultimate sacrifice and had become a time-honored tradition. So we carried that out today as, as part of our ceremony. Um, and we this day is remembered. Uh, want, we want this to be a brief ceremony. Um, we want everyone just to take a moment throughout the day and pause and reflect upon uh, what happened 18 years ago and, and how it's changed our lives and, and what can we do uh, to, to keep the memory of, of those souls uh, alive today. Uh, so I would now ask uh, retired fire chief David Jordan is going to come up and read the firefighters prayer for us. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace the little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my every, every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate I am to lose my life, please bless your protecting hand, my children and my wife. Thank you, Chief. I now ask the flag to be brought back to full staff. So in conclusion, I want to thank everyone again for taking time out of their day to, to come up here and uh, I want to thank Victor for inviting us. Um, normally this ceremony is held at, uh, at the station uh, annually and, and last year Victor reached out to us and asked if we could, if we could participate and we were happy to do so. So uh, thank you Victor, thank you all, all that have come up here today and uh, good luck with the golf, enjoy the day. Thank you.
Thank you, Deputy Chief. To the golfers here today at about 10.28 in the morning, you will hear a siren coming from the parking lot. Please take 30 seconds of a moment of silence. That time will memorialize the time the second tower fell. Uh, special thanks to Victor for putting on this event and for the Norfolk County Sheriff's Department for presenting the colors here today. Uh, this concludes our opening ceremonies. Uh, the golfers, while you're here today, if you can stop in to see some of the raffles, uh, the CHIP program, uh, Prone Family Foundation, and keep your left arm straight and your head down. <laughs> <laughs>